Hey guys, welcome to another Cigar Chat brought to you live on CigarFederation.com, broadcast around the world in the Armed Forces Radio Network. Thank you for tuning in to spend some time with us today. We appreciate it. Your host, co-host, two-headed host, uh, Robbie Raz from Cigar Federation here with you as always. we got Logan hanging out in the... Uh, it's not newly renovated. But it's fairly new. I got a new lamp. Yeah, it's, it's and the the little shutter on that lamp is not wrinkly at all. I know. Oh, it's by design. It's called Shabby Chic, Rob, so you can That's blow me. <laughs> and uh, second off is my wife, because she got mad at me the other day. She doesn't spend money without my approval. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I said it. And uh, she, in out of anger, because I pissed her off, bought a oh. new lamp for downstairs out of anger. So that's why mm -hmm. this one was brought to my, my man cave. So she brought you an ugly one? No, she bought a really cool one for downstairs that does a much better job of lighting our house because it's like we live with vampires because it's so dark. Mm -hmm. um, and she did it out of anger. And then she brought this one up here, so it'll probably set there for at least the next year until mm -hmm. I clean the room again. Well, so some, some passive-aggressive purchasing. That's good. Yeah, it's cool, glad, man. Glad to hear that everything's going well. Um, we have got, after some uh, some issues before the show started, we've got Victor Vitale here with us. Damn frustrating. And you got a pretty sweet beard going, man. You do, man. Yeah, yeah this is uh, this is no shave November, December, January, February, March. Oh yeah, so we're we're on the same uh, we're kind of on the same schedule. I've trimmed mine up a little bit though. You you went you've just gone for it. Well, you know, believe it or not, this has been trimmed a few times already. So oh, it's uh, it's really it's kind of like a small dog. <laughs> You know, it has a mind of its own. It actually tries to eat the food. So when I stick food in my mouth, there's like the beard just grabs on and just like takes it in. I don't know if you get that too. You know, I've I've noticed that. Um, I feel like I, I I'm I'm in a, a compulsively neat eater as it is anyway. Like I'll wipe my mouth after every bite. I just because I think it's gross when people have food on their face. But mm -hmm. I, I feel like now it's like I'm always. Even if I'm not eating anything, I want to wipe because I feel like I got stuff on my face. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I think it, I think we're suffering from the same affliction. It, it, it uh, I don't have a lot of OCD, but that's one thing that I'm just I'm, I'm OCD about washing my hands and about which is why they're always dry and about uh, having food on my face. So that's yeah, I'm definitely in that same uh, I'm in that same thing. But uh, yeah, the, food, the food part is gross, but you know the cigar smelling mustache. Now that's something. <laughs> That's something. It's you know if if uh, if you can do it if you can pull it off, it's pretty good. I, I don't. Well, I, you know, I don't. My mind. wife doesn't care for it too much. You know she's, uh, you know, she yeah. doesn't like the way the beard smells like lunch. You know when it's dinner time, she's not. You know she's not into that. <laughs> she, yeah, she'll. You know, I, I'm kind of in the same boat. We can go on a whole separate thing. I just got some some shampoo and stuff that. Uh, <laughs> that Head and shoulders for your beard. <laughs> yeah, kind of. Well, it's funny. A cigar surgeon turned me on to all this stuff because he's he's like whenever he gets into anything he goes full bore right. Oh, so dude, he's he, worse than me. And, and he's got a little baby tiny piece of beard that he's been working on for a while. God bless him. But uh, he's got the cream and this and that and the other thing. And and I'm just like, no, I don't even use that. I just wash with like I wash my face. He's like, oh man, I can't believe you don't use beard shampoo and beard conditioner and all this. The loop. I didn't know this either. I just I, used regular soap. Exactly. You know? I didn't even know it existed. So it showed up at my house today, and I'll, I'll, I'll let you know how it is. But there is actually a, a dandruff shampoo for your beard. Apparently that's a thing. People have beard dandruff. I had it last week, actually. I'll admit it. I had it. <laughs> well, I they had beard dandruff. I was wearing a black shirt. Oh, man. And uh, it, it looked like, you know, November in New England on my shirt. Mm. Bad times. So, well, now that we've uh, we've gone through the uh, the beard intro, yeah. yeah, can we get past the beards now? <laughs> so apparently, there is something that you can use to fix that, and uh, that's that's nice. That's a close up that we're getting there. It's not as it's not as luscious as Logan's was when I was. I actually was watching an old episode of Cigar Great. Chat when you had the big neck beard going. Dude, there was a time when the In beard was actually over. growing over my face. Like over my lips, so I look oh, like a cool. fucking Wookie, dude. That's, that's cool. Freaking awesome. It, that was, wife made me shave it. That's rough. Like you could have had, you could have gone Peter Griffin and had some birds nesting. I could have. I could have. Yeah, I want to do it one day. Nice but, uh, mustache curtain. You gonna go like this with your mustache? And it was more like. It was more like this. It was more <laughs> like, <laughs> the curtain, the mustache. Oh. Curtain, that's, that's, <laughs> it was more of like a roll-up curtain, like a stage curtain, than like that. It was pretty legit though. 
It's, but I can I can rock the beard if I want to, man. It's that's uh, and you grew up pretty quick. Mine doesn't like I don't know. It's taken me a while to get to where I am, but I, I do have I to keep it. You know, if we keep going, we might be able to pull off ZZ Top by the trade show. We can we can give it a shot. Oh, if I didn't shave by the trade show, I would be like, <laughs> I'd look about like normal, more or I'm, less. You know, honestly, I, I haven't cut my hair since. I mean, I don't know. It's like it's pretty long. That's pretty long for you. You bringing the mullet back? It's it kind of I got a little bit of mullet action going, but I'm thinking about doing the um, what is it when you grow your hair out and then you shave it and you give it to people so they can make wigs out of it? Locks of love. Yeah, I want to do it's that. Be Twelve like, inches, dog. That's yeah. gonna take a minute. That's uh, um, it's gonna be like spring 2016 before I get there, but I don't know. I might I might try to do that. We'll see. And that that was an epiphany I had in the shower this morning, and I haven't shared it with anybody, but mm. I shared it with you guys. And you know our our millions of listeners on AFRN. So now they all know that I'm growing my hair out. Um, anyway, we didn't get together to talk about any of this crap. Um, we've got I thought it was uh, the beard show. What? Yeah. Well, we we could uh, we could talk about it a little bit more next week. You know, you, you'll have to tune in next week because I'll give you guys an update on how my beard shampoo has worked and then, <laughs> and and the beard saver, the cream that you put on. I'll have to let you guys know. Are you do you get split ends with your beard? No, like it. it the skin gets really dry underneath, mm. and it gets it gets itchy. So this the 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 wash is just you know wash, but uh, it's got like aloe and nonsense in it to keep things whatever. But the cream is supposed to uh, keep the skin underneath moisturized and keep you from getting ingrown, ingrown hairs. So yeah, yeah, that's the stuff they make for girls with beards, right? Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Aloe we want, beard cream. <laughs> yeah, we gotta. You, you gotta accessorize. We talk, we, I don't remember what episode we were talking about accessorizing. Was I think it was the uh, pipe show when we were we talking, were talking about, about with the Drew State guys. It's like the when you're getting into pipes. I mean, really smoking. And we could talk about pipes a little bit with Victor. Um, you, you the the pipe that you're smoking doesn't really make that big of a difference. It's of the experience that you're having. It's all in you know the accessory that you want. But anyway, unless you have a suge. Oh, but well, yeah, that's uh, that's. The suge pipes are pretty sweet, but they are pretty anyway, good. anyways. But, but I digress. Um, back to ten minutes ago, um, we got Victor here. We've had Victor on the show a few times, uh, so we're not going to go through the getting to know you stuff. Uh, we'll pump through some questions, and I, there might be some uh, where folks want to know how you kind of got your start in the business. But we'll get into that. But we've also got uh, some, a ton of giveaways. No, Logan was just showing it off there. We've got some five packs of the um, of the Connecticut, but it's not your new Connecticut. It's a different Connecticut. But we'll get into all of that. So kind of tell us what's been going on since we've had you. We talked to you at the trade show, but we haven't had you on since. So give us a little bit of update of what's going on with you. Uh, yeah, I don't know. You know, where where do I start? Jeez. Uh, uh, well, let's start after the trade show, which is approximately well, yeah. August. The trade yeah. show was sweet. You had a nice little setup. The white yeah. leather couches and all that. Really that was cool. cool. Yeah, the trade show was really cool. It was it was a good trade show. Although I don't like being in any one spot for two years in a row. I'm kind of against that. I like going to a different location every year. Uh, I think it's a little bit better for the business to uh, travel around to make it uh, more accessible for retailers on uh, one side of the country and another side of the country. But you know that's what's best for the organization. So that's what they decide to do. Um, I got a trade show. On that, though. Yeah. Okay. I got a question. I disagree with you, Victor, and here's why. Dude. Is that I agree that yes, going around getting people, you know, in different parts because there's going to be people on the East Coast that aren't going to travel to Vegas and vice versa. I get that, but just with this year in New Orleans, I mean, everyone loves New Orleans, but it's just not really set up for a big convention. Do you know what I mean? It doesn't have the cabs. It doesn't have the hotels. Yes, it's got Bourbon Street, but do you think it's kind of a downfall that it doesn't have that infrastructure that supports? the thousands of people that actually come to the trade show? You know, I, it's, a, it's a good question. W what I see based on history, history tells us that when the show was in Las Vegas for two years in a row, the first year is incredible. The second year, attendance drops off. Hmm. So you guys, you know, you may have gotten the feeling or may have even noticed that when you were there I last did. year in Las Vegas. For sure. And the same thing happens. Uh, there was one time when it was in New Orleans two years in a row, and it, it was pretty much the same thing. Now, you know, the consensus uh, around the industry is that there's a lot of people that will say, oh, I wish it was in Vegas every year. You know, why? Well, I don't want to go to New Orleans. And, you know, that, it's pretty incredible because the, when you get to New Orleans for a trade show, you'll see that the people that actually go really love being there in New Orleans. You know, again, for that 
first year. So, uh, you know, that's really been my experience in the past 20 years. Whatever it's at one particular place, two or three years, one year, we had it in Vegas three years in a row, I think. Uh, I shouldn't say one year, but uh, it was there was a three-year uh, in a row spot for Vegas at one point, and the third year was just an atrocity. I could see where you would run into a little bit of that uh, kind of been there, done that feeling. Um, yeah. You know, especially, and we've talked about this before, with uh, some manufacturers making their um, their IPCPR deals available before the show or to people who don't come to the show, um, as opposed to rewarding the folks who do, you know, go out and, and take that trip. I know there were some companies that, that uh, or at least from what I heard, uh, were uh, really rewarding uh, uh, retailers who came out to the show with, you know, s- exclusive releases that you can only get at the show or exclusive deals or whatever. Um, but yeah, I think if you combine the fact that it was there a couple years in a row and with, well, I don't need to go, I can get the deals anyway, I can see the issue for sure. And you, yeah, uh, and you yeah. actually, yeah. oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, I was just going to make a comment on the deals. A lot of the guys send their deals out. The, the organization really frowns upon that for the retailers and you know for the companies that do offer deals. Uh, I, I see them out there the month prior, and it really it makes doing business in the month prior to the show really difficult. I don't offer deals. I'm notorious just for straight selling. You know, I, I only make so much. You know, we've been through this before, and yeah. I go to the trade show just to exhibit, and you know. Uh, press palms with my lawyer, my uh, uh, loyal retailers, and lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> you slip there. Hey, yeah, <laughs> you're, you're mafia lawyer, Victor. You let it slip, dog. <laughs> and that's you know, have have a cigar on a white leather couch, you know. And that's yeah. that's really it. So yeah, I mean, the way you do business, and we talked about this before, is you've got your you know your specific core retailers, and those are the guys that you serve it, a service. And you can, if you know, if you've got more production, whatever, you'll take on new, uh, new retailers. But for the most part, you're pretty much set. So you're kind of, you're a different beast than than a lot of these guys. Like you said, you're not offering those deals. So for you, it really is just to get out there and see your lawyer, but also see your your customers as well, and <laughs> uh, and just get some of that face time, just to to strengthen the bonds you guys already have. So it's a little bit of a different animal for you. But I will say, I mean, Logan, we were, uh, <clears throat> um, Victor was nice enough to. Uh, give us some time in the booth, and we we hung out for a little while, and uh, that was a lot of fun. Just sitting there, just kind of sitting there, and just shooting the breeze. You know, I mean, we did some interviews and some videos and stuff, but afterwards, we just kind of sat and hung out, and you know, you were asking Logan about the family and just kind of talking yeah. and stuff. So it was that was it. Definitely has a different vibe when uh, when we come to see you than when we're going into a uh, booth for general, for example. Very very different, and I, but you I know, like that. You know, one thing I've never asked Victor. <clears throat> As I know where most companies make their cigars, I honestly have no freaking clue where you make your cigars and in what factory. I have really? no idea. I don't, I don't know if you just not disclosed it, like you just don't tell anyone, but like I don't think you've ever told me. Ever. Really? I'm serious. I'm being dead serious. So uh, the cigars are made in Honduras. So I use okay. Nicaraguan tobacco. Obviously, you guys, you, you know the... Uh, um, the profile of, of the blends. But the right. factory is a small factory in Honduras. Okay. It's uh, managed by fourth generation, one Carlos Aguilar. And uh, his family's uh, you know, been in the cigar business for over a century. Um, they do small production, do a lot for Europe, uh, do some for the United States. But you know, as far as a, uh, a partnership brand like myself, I'm the only one that comes out of that factory. Really? I did not know that. And you've done a lot with uh, the Europe market, haven't you? I mean, or you focused on it a little bit? Yeah, uh, I have distribution in Germany, France, and Spain. Now, is that is that normal for uh, for let's let's just focus on a company your size? Is that is that normal for for them to for someone like yourself to be that well represented in in Europe, or is that not? I really have no idea. Um, I, I wouldn't say that it's normal. I think that uh, what what I'm seeing in Europe right now is that uh, there's a real desire for uh, non-Cuban cigars, and I, I think that although I haven't heard this recently, I think that now that uh, other parts of the world know that the Americans will allow be allowed to buy Cuban cigars. 
Uh, I think that the production, I think Cuba only makes 160 million cigars a year or something like that. I don't know the exact number, but if the United States uh, starts getting an allotment of that, it's going to be a substantial amount of cigars because we Americans consume roughly 300 million premium cigars a year. So if Cuba makes 160 million for the rest of the world, how much will they be allotting here and what effect would that allotment have on the existing 300 million? I don't think that consumption is going to increase. Logan. Logan. Ask, <laughs> ask economist Logan. He would be more than willing to tell you what his opinion is. But wait is. a second. Do we actually want to hear the answer? The opinion is very insightful, I think. Okay, go ahead. But only Victor well, Of course you think it's insightful. Of course. <laughs> Here's what's going to happen, man, is if when the day that it does, which is not happening anytime soon, but when it does, the Cuban production is going to go from 160 million to about 250 million, and that they're going to all the crap stuff they don't give to the European and you know Asia Pacific market, they're going to dump in the U.S. and it's going to be crap. It's going to be overpriced. What's going to end up happening though is that you're right. Americans aren't going to probably consume any more than 300 million premium cigars, which means the non-Cuban consumption is going to go way down which ultimately I think is going to right-size the non-Cuban market, bring prices down, kind of bring it back down where it was maybe five years ago. And after a couple of years, people are going to realize that Cubans are crap. And then at that point, Cuba is either going to start giving us better cigars or the Cuban actual consumption is going to go way down. It's going to happen. That's interesting. You know, I never thought of that, but as you were saying it, what I, I, I do know something about Cuba, and the factories are pretty much half empty. Uh, some of them are only in 10% uh, of them are being used for production. So they can get more manpower to make more cigars. The question is, do they have enough tobacco to support a higher production than 160 million? We'll never know the answer to that because uh, essentially they can tell you they're putting Cuban tobacco in their cigars when the possibility is there that they're not. Exactly. Interesting. Yeah, it's... You know, we, we, we haven't really talked a whole lot about <clears throat> about to, uh, Cuban tobacco, and I mean, we could we could kind of keep going on and on about it. But let's uh, we can come back to this if you guys want. Um, I, I want to talk about. I mean, I know we we asked Victor what was going on. We kind of got sidetracked, but you've got you've definitely got a new release. So let's talk about that, and um, and then we'll start getting some audience questions. Then maybe we can get back to the Cuban stuff. Sound good? Sure. Yeah. Okay with that? Yeah. So tell us about you've got a new Connecticut on the market. So tell us about that. New Connecticut, I, uh, I showed it at the trade show. That was the unveiling, and then I had the, uh, the launch date of, uh, of November of last year, which wasn't the official launch date. The actual launch date was uh, last week, believe oh, wow. it or not. Okay. So it took some time. What I wanted to do was I wanted to make sure that the aging process was absolutely complete, and that's something that I do. That's that's just a part of my program. If, if the cigars aren't ready, I don't package them, I don't ship them, I have a very small production. I'm a true boutique. I'm not in a race to get to over a million cigars in production. Um, we've talked about this several times. It, 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 from, from a financial business company perspective, people would say, well, if you don't want to grow, why are you in business? And my answer to that is to pay tribute to the art culture and tradition of our industry. So that's really where my focus is. So knowing that the cigars just weren't ready to be released in November, I kept them for a little while and they were they were ready in February, but I, I really just wanted to wait. February is really not a great month to launch a brand. So I, I waited until March to do it. So the Connecticut comes in three sizes. It's an it's an Ecuadorian Connecticut. And uh, nailed it. That's gonna uh, that's gonna raise some questions. You know, people say, "Well, why don't you do Connecticut, Connecticut?" Too expensive. And, well, expensive is one answer, but honestly, the expense isn't what uh, deterred me. What deterred yeah. me was um, the sustainability. Knowing that on my budget, I couldn't compete with the bigger guys and secure wrapper leaf for next year and the year after and the year after and then I would just be left with this gamble when it was time to buy on whether or not I could get it in the first place and then what grade I would be able to buy um, 
you know, I'm not first in line at these things. I'm pretty much last in line because I'm just a very small production guy. So, you know, that was a tough decision to make because I wanted Connecticut in Connecticut, but uh, in the same breath, it was an easy decision to make because I also want consistency. So, I, I love the way you answer questions. Um, <clears throat> it's very, like, you answer the questions in a very thoughtful manner. Um, and I, I appreciate that. So, but you actually have two different Connecticut's. You, we were talking about this off air because w what we're giving away tonight is some, I think they're five pack boxes of a different Connecticut, correct? Yeah, so what you guys are giving away is the Regalo. The Regalo was ready in September. I only made 105 packs, and oh, wow. it, was a, it was a limited release. It was a more uh, fashion-forward Connecticut. Really, what, uh, uh, what a lot of the producers are making today in Connecticut is the fuller-strength Connecticut's. Sure. Now, although I wouldn't classify the Regalo as a full-bodied Connecticut, it is, when you look at the quote-unquote classic Connecticut category, you guys, if I said, hey, name five classic Connecticut's, you would pick out five Connecticut-shaped cigars that were just in the mild, traditional-type Connecticut category. Mm, Macanudo. Well, <laughs> yeah. So Inside joke. Sorry. I'll tell you later. The, uh, the Regalo <laughs> does not fit in that category. However, the Connecticut for production, which is the Suave, Elegante, and Reggio, uh, that's wrapped in both cedar and has a paper wrap on top of it, that is the classic traditional Connecticut. Okay. <clears throat> so this, so this other one, it's it's a Connecticut with some with some teeth to it. It's, it's got little... yeah yeah baby teeth really. It's not you know <laughs> nothing like. Um, I wouldn't say. Okay, so there, let's use a benchmark. So uh, Don Pepin came out with a Connecticut, yep. which is a very nice cigar. But if you compare the strengths, the Regalo is still going to be more mild. More okay. mild. Sure. Okay, so yeah, those but those Connecticut's with that have a little bit of kick to them have been really popular. Um, yeah. I know the one from AKA Cigars has been really popular. Uh, Fred from Nomad with the Connecticut Fuerte has been exceptionally popular, at least in our circles, uh, that people really enjoy that cigar. So it seems like there's definitely a market for that. Um, so that's it's interesting when you talk about it, though, and it's a Connecticut really for that modern palate. You know, that's a term that we always throw around. Um, I'll, I'll credit Catfish on that one. He was the one who, who coined that term as far as I know. You said that any better, actually. It's yeah. Fishy <laughs> fish. I'll put, there it is. There's your tagline, Connecticut for the modern palate. We'll, uh, we'll take some... Yeah, I got that trademark, so Victor, yeah. uh, if you want to talk to my attorney, uh, we, yeah, can well, we, we can We can talk to your lawyer, and your lawyer can talk to our lawyer, and then we'll... You've got to go to Vegas to see my lawyer. I know, exactly. <laughs> He's got the horse head, horse head under the couch, man. <laughs> Uh, that's okay. So, so def there's two different Connecticut's. We've got some of the of what was it, the Regalo? Yeah. So just to be clear, the Regalo is not in production. That was a one time only. Oh. And oh. So okay. So the ones like you said, you did 105 count boxes. Yeah, and that was it. That was a, it. Was a one time only. It was just really. Uh, it was really just a gift. So uh, wow. that's that's really what it's used for. So, so that was got, it. It was just a one time only, just kind of just playing around with the blend, and I just I really loved the way it came out. Uh, but it really it wasn't for the Connecticut category that I was looking at. My Connecticut is traditional classic Connecticut. It's not the uh, modern day palette Connecticut. So Logan is more likely to enjoy the Regalo. I'm more likely to enjoy. The, Probably true. The newer Connecticut. Okay. But Victor, I got a question, man. You're a pretty hip fella. If you know that the modern palate likes the Connecticut that's the heater, why not? And you think in the Los Regalos, or not Los Regalos, but the Regalos Connecticut is that cigar, why come out with something classic that's not really in line with the modern palate? Um, I'm glad you asked that. I'm just more of a traditionalist. Uh, you know, I'm really not a trendsetter. Uh, at least I don't think that I am. I, I, I'm not the guy that's hanging out in the circles. That's uh, I'm not the cool guy. So I disagree. Uh, you know, it's cool. just, uh, I'm just a traditionalist. I, I don't. I don't really know how, <laughs> how else to answer that question. That was. Did you hear what Logan said? <laughs> no. Logan, he says I disagree. I think you're very cool. Thank you, very cool, man. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, man. That, was, that was funny. That 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 made me chuckle. 
Um, okay, so so yeah, so the cigars that we're giving away tonight is we're giving away like ten percent of what you made. So that's kind of awesome. Now, that's um, how cool we are, people. Yeah. So yeah, Logan has to talk to my attorney in Las Vegas. So. Yeah, no kidding. I know, man. He took my horse and cut its head off and put it <laughs> on the couch. Because <laughs> um, Victor's in the mob, everyone. If you didn't know that. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna go way off track because you're talking. You keep talking about cutting off the horse head. There is a there was a PlayStation Two game called The Godfather, and it was it, it was based around the movie. But you were a guy. You played the part of this guy who wasn't actually in the movie, but. Uh, so it, you, one of the levels was you were the guy who had to go get the horse and make sure oh. that it, that it was yeah I don't I don't remember if you actually cut the head off or not or maybe somebody else did it and he just gave it to you but like one of the missions was to carry this bloody horse head up into his bed and put it in there without waking him up so I just thought that was interesting anyway I I think Logan should replay the guy that wakes up with the horse head in his bed right now I I think that would be a that would be good for for TV. We I don't play. remember what he does, other than he just frees the f out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that would be cool. You should try it. That's that's one of the most copied scenes or like mocked scenes in all of yeah. in all of film that history. That was a great I always, scene. I always remember the, the one from uh, the Great Outdoors with um, it was John Candy and uh, dude. And, is that where they have like the Dan Aykroyd? The the like the old ninety six or yes yeah. yes but the, the part where he shoots the bear in the head and it, it all the hair comes off the top of the bear's head and yeah, then the yeah. bear's running away and the screaming was the same type of scene but anyway we're getting way off topic but okay so we've got some some exclusive stuff to give away Logan hold two of those back so we can each have one oh uh, we will and I'm gonna go through so we're doing we're gonna do the questions a little bit differently normally I just kind of go through and I, I I ask the questions that I think are the best. But I've asked all of our members to, you can vote on the questions. I can give them a little plus one. So the, the questions that have been plused the most are the ones I'm going to ask. And we'll just kind of go in order. No shnackies. Uh, now this one is from Bob Dog, And I'm not exactly sure if Bob is referencing a specific cigar or just a general question. But we're going to throw it at you and we'll see what happens. Uh, okay, so this one is from Bob Dog. And I love his headshot. He's like, he's got the cigar sticking out. It looks like Popeye. Um, he says, what does it mean to change the priming of a blend? Changing the priming of the blend is uh, uh, just when you, the primings are the different levels of the plant. So um, honestly, I've never heard of this term before, changing the priming of a blend. But, you know, maybe that's something new that someone's going to market with. Um, really, you you take there's there's really no one priming. I mean, if someone is is really getting into like one specific priming for one specific blend, you're really narrowing down your your uh, uh, your yield for your cigar or your blend. So typically, what happens is you use a little bit of a range. It's usually like three different primings in a range, and then you take that for the filler, and then you use you know another set of primings for the binder. And usually, wrapper is really uh, where you go with one priming. You know, you're looking at like uh, fifth and sixth priming for wrapper, depending on the size of the cigar. I think Bob Dog. Let me see. I I, I can speak idiot really well. And well, I he think said he was asking it as a general question. As a general question. So, obviously, the priming of the plants, you have your Volato, which is at the bottom that gets thrown away. There's Seco, then Viso, then Lajero, then Medio Tempio, then Corona, right? And I think yeah. what he's asking, Victor, is saying, if you've got a cigar that's got, let's say, uh, in the fill, I'm just making this up, but say two Secos, a Viso, and a Lajero in the filler, yeah. and you change one of those Secos to a Viso, what does that do to the blend? Okay, that makes sense. All right, so like I, said, I speak idiot well. That that could change the taste. That could change the aroma. That could change the combustion rate. There's, you know, the science. Uh, and this is not directed at anybody here or you know on the chat or anything. But you, you know, you talk to people like at the legislative uh, level, where you go to these town hall meetings and people are like, ah, we want to tax cigars and you know, all this stuff, and you. you they just kind of think you just grab a bunch of leaves and you roll it up and you smoke it. You know, it's, it, there's really a science behind this. And you have to have uh, people that know what they're doing when you're purchasing tobacco, when you're blending tobacco, when you're aging tobacco. Everything has to be perfect. The variable for uh, change, disruption, and 
error. There's just so many variables there that can do that. So if if you had to, uh, in an emergency situation, change out Seiko for Viso, it could potentially screw up the entire blend. Yep. Sure. You know, it could be a disaster. I mean, unless by some anomaly you have something in storage or aging that is so similar that you can get away with like a 5% margin or something like that. And I always say that production blends change anywhere from 5 to 7% all the time because of a reason like that. A shortage of tobacco or you couldn't get uh, any more from that crop or that particular farm so you have to start substituting here and there. But it's just diluted over time and over boxes and, and over production that you never really, unless you're a cigar collector and you're aging and you're numbering these things and you're smoking them, that's when you'll really be able to tell the difference. Hmm. So. Uh, Bob, one thing when you want to start talking about primings and, and really kind of get an idea of what's going on, you've got to go on some of the tours that, that different companies are offering, like factory tours. I, still, Cigar Safari. There's still Just some. So you know. I think there's some spots on the Cigar Federation's Cigar Safari trip. I mean, when I went on Cigar Safari a couple of years ago, uh, you it just changes your your, your life. Of, of yeah, cigar. I mean, it changes your cigar smoking life exactly. I mean, there's so many things that go into it, and you just we take them for granted. But I mean, here in California, it's there's the wine the wine uh, industry is huge out here, and when we're talking about the weather and drought and how that has such an impact on different vintages, it's the same thing with tobacco. But you don't necessarily talk about it in the same terms. But anything like that can can impact your blend. So, um, Bob, if you get a chance, or anybody's listening, get a chance to go on one of those trips. They're not cheap, but it, it, you really do. You definitely get your money's worth. And you get to play with some of the different oh, yeah. tobaccos, and it's worth, worth it. it. Yeah, yeah. And you really get to see to see what the the differences are. Um, so that was that was a good question from Bob. And actually, the next yeah. the thank next uh, yeah, and that was and that was a good answer too, Victor and, and Logan. Thank you for translating. You're welcome. Uh, <laughs> uh, and, and Bob is he's a popular guy tonight because his next the next question that was voted the most is also from Bob Dog. Bob Dog, man. And I, I think, Bob, your last name is Lang Maid. I think that's how you say it. Oh, that's who he is. Okay. Um, yeah, we've got two Bobs. There's there's Bob Dog, but then there's another Bob. and There's another Bob that's from California and Bob Dog, and I think they're different guys. Um, Bob, the other Bob definitely frequents our uh, uh, sharing our pairing show, and he's always good to ask questions. But, uh, okay, so the question is, uh, do you consider a must or... Or an advantage having a close relationship with the tobacco growers in producing a premium cigar. Yes, yeah, it, that's a big yes. Uh, so uh, it's no secret I buy from two growers, uh, the Olivas in Tampa and Eduardo Fernandez. Their farms. That's where my that's tobacco where comes from. Is. So to me, that's just some of the best tobacco on the planet. I, you know, with respect to the other growers, they make a wonderful product. And, you know, much respect there, but these are the people that I choose to purchase tobacco from, and I think they're fantastic. So uh, where the relationship part comes into play is really the relationship has everything to do with the future, uh, what they're doing, you know, whether they're willing to let you know what's going on, what they're forecasting as far as uh, if they're going to have a shortage, if uh, they're overselling to a particular company. Uh, if someone is bidding on tobacco that uh, I'm currently buying and they could potentially run out. I mean, there's just so many different uh, aspects of that relationship that uh, can make or break you depending on what type of relationship you have. But, you know, essentially, those two companies do what they do so well, it's really hard just to be a nobody that buys from them. They pretty much go out of their way to make a relationship if you're a customer. Yeah, that's <clears throat> that's we've heard that a, a few different times. We may have even heard it directly from you as well, especially given the, the limited amount of cigars that you produce. Um, having that relationship is key. So you can make sure that you know the, the, the cigars that you're producing now, you can produce them you know, two years from now, three years from now, or whatever. Make sure you're going to get ac access to those tobaccos. So another good question from Bob. Um, guys, you're listening to Cigar Chat, brought to you live on CigarFederation.com. Broadcast around the world in the Armed Forces Radio Network. We're chatting with Victor Vitali this evening. 
and we're talking about a little bit of everything. I'm going to keep getting into some of these uh, questions here. Um, there was one from Charlie that I wanted to get to. No. Was yeah, no, it's a good no, question. Uh, question. This is, no, everybody, this is this is a this is a pertinent question. And but I'm he's not ask. here, and like he always asks these <laughs> questions like he knows what the f is going on. He doesn't even show up, man. This is a pretty straightforward question, and I would actually it's probably like, real simple. It's like I probably. Would, it is. Grader, it, it's, it? A, it's a simple. It's a, it's a simple type question, but there's there's ramifications to it, and I would like to know the answer. All right, let's just answer. It. Let's ask. <laughs> uh, he says, Victor. He says, I know you make quite a few larger cigars, robusto or bigger. Um, are there any plans of making a smaller or uh, smaller ring gauge cigars in the future? He says, I really enjoy your blends, but I prefer uh, you know Coronas, Lanceros, things like that. And I think we've talked about this in the past, and. You know, maybe you answered us directly. Maybe you kind of danced around it. Maybe we had to talk to your lawyer. I don't know. But can we look forward to maybe some some Victor Vitale Coronas or Lanceros? Anything in the near future? Well, the Cedro number five is a five and a half by forty eight. So really, and okay. that size started as my personal factory cigar. And at the time, I really had no intentions on making it. And to my surprise, a lot of retailers were asking me for it because that uh, part of the market was being requested for, which is really odd because I remember back in the 90s when you smoked the Corona and that was a big cigar. And <laughs> you know, by today's standard, the Corona is pretty much obsolete in uh, mostly every brand maker's portfolio. So uh, if you're looking for a Corona size, which is really not the standard by the book Corona, but it's much smaller by today's uh, standards, it's a five and a half by forty-eight, and it's the Cedro Number no. Five uh, Tortuga Reserva with the red band and a cedar sleeve. I think that's. <clears throat> I want to say that's the one that we've reviewed, Logan. I know that's the one that I've smoked. Um, probably. But I, I want to say that was the one I reviewed. So. Yeah. Um, now, okay, so you mentioned that your retailers are asking for it, and that was really the impetus for you to produce it on a larger scale. How, how often does that happen with you? I mean, especially because you work really, really closely with your retailers. You've got a select few that you are, you've got good relationships with them. Um, I mean, and you obviously value their feedback, but does that happen often where they say, hey, you know, uh, we've got a lot of guys who want to smoke your cigar in a 6x60 or whatever. Is, is that a common thing, or is, is that... No, maybe not. No, I wouldn't say it's common. I mean, with the exception of it happening that one time, and it's because I was traveling and uh, going around and lighting these cigars, and you know, while while with my sales rep, he he was giving uh, you know, the retailer what we had, which was either a seven and a half by fifty-eight or a six by sixty or something. I was pulling out the five and a half by forty-eight and lighting that up. And, you know, it was kind of like, uh, hey, what do you have there? You know, what's that? Was that on the order form? And so that's pretty much how that one went. And then it was just, and it just happened over and over and over and over again. And I said, really? Who wants a five and a half by 48 these days? But apparently they did. Um, I haven't had that many requests for anything, although I have had a few requests for Lancero. Uh, which uh, I am. I just. I won't be making a Lance Arrow. I, I won't leave anyone hanging with the wonder or anything like that. It's just. <laughs> it's just not going to happen. So what? What I can take from from that answer is, <clears throat> obviously, no Lance Arrow. You've you've squashed that. But when you travel with your, uh, I'm gonna throw you under the bus. When you travel with your uh, your sales reps, you kind of undermine them a little bit. You say, you can offer this, but then I'm going to pull out this other cigar that you can't offer. <laughs> so you, make, you make your guy look bad a little bit. I don't know. Well, man. at the time, it was just made for me to smoke because, you know, who who knew? Who wanted that? Oh, wanted it's, it. it's, that smaller ring gauge, man, it's coming back. It's coming I back. I hope so. I, I love them. I mean, you know, it's uh, I, today I see more than ever people smoking cigars that are too large for them. So, you know... <laughs> Yeah, and, you know, I, and I, I don't, I don't just mean by looks. You can tell when a cigar is too large for some people; it doesn't burn correctly, or you know, right away people want to blame it on the, com the combustion, tobacco, the blend, the whatever it is, the construction, the this, the that. But really, you have your own personal smoking rate. I mean, everybody does. You go at your own speed. Not everybody has the same smoking speed, and that smoking speed is best designed for a specific ring gauge. 
So if your smoking speed is a Corona and you're smoking a 6x60, something's not going to happen correctly. You could have a bad burn. Uh, things just could, I know a guy that try, tries to smoke 6 by 60s all, and he constantly has a bad burn. And I yeah. keep saying the same thing over and over again. That's just not, not your that's not your speed. You I, want I've a never, Cadillac and you're driving a Ferrari or you know vice versa. Just don't do it. I, I've never heard of the term smoking speed. I, I like that. There's I mean, and there really is. I mean, when before Logan knew what the hell he was doing, he was just puff, 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 puff. Hey, puff. man. Hey, and now. He's going through, going through a, a Churchill in 25 minutes. First of all, that's but, not true. <laughs> I, I did well, smoke a tantrum in 30 minutes, though. We know well, Logan we, gets down to business. Yeah, hey. he, he means it. He smokes like he means it. But, <laughs> but really, I mean, there, oh, there's, yeah. there's an art to blending cigars, but there's really a bit of an art to smoking it as well, and that, that art really is individual to each individual smoker. I've never thought about it that way. Um, that's that's interesting. What's that, your uh, smoking speed? I don't know. <laughs> I can trademark that one, Logan. You want to you want to call my lawyer and uh, he's probably at a slot machine right now. He yeah. probably is. I mean, he's probably chopping off the horse's head. <laughs> um, no, uh, what was I gonna say? So I actually did some research and did some, for science. And can I? Oh, we just lost Logan right in the middle of his thought. Uh -oh, what happened? He just disappeared right in the middle of his thought. That's okay. He'll come back on. Um, hey, hold on one second. I got I got someone at the door too. So hold on. Oh, well, all right. Well, I guess it'll just be me then. I'll ask the questions and I'll answer them myself. Uh, it's actually kind of peaceful now. Oh, I was gonna say it's peaceful now that Logan's gone. But so I got so excited. It's funny. You get fired up. You hit like escape or something, and then Victor gets up and leaves because he's <laughs> he's got somebody at the door. Oh, uh, but I was gonna uh, answer my question though. Was, I remember when I did that for science. You do everything for science. I know I there do. You go. So what I was going to say, Victor, I got so fired up and excited, is that I took two cigars, same ring gauge. I smoked one at a minute between puffs, and then one at two minutes between puffs, and actually timed it. And the experience, it was like a Robusto. It was like a 550. And the experience at two minutes, I thought the cigar was going to go out, like not taking a puff every two minutes. And the experience and the flavors we're just so much better. And I think when you smoke too fast, um, I mean, all you're doing is burning up all the essential oils in the cigar, and that's what gives you the flavor anyways. It's not the tobacco itself. And when you have a cigar, it tastes harsh because you're smoking too fast. Yeah, so. I couldn't agree with you more. And what I could say is just to kind of give people a roadmap, if they're smoking them too fast, they typically think that they should go to a larger, larger ring gauge. Well, that's not the case. They should actually go down to a smaller ring gauge because the reason why they're smoking it so fast is because they're looking for more flavor. So the smaller the ring gauge, the more flavor you're going to get because the tobacco is going to burn at a different heat rate, and that's what you should do. Interesting. That's you heard it first here. Yeah, that's a good Pretty point. Much Logan, how much time do we have left? Uh, not so much. We started at a weird time, so I can't We're going all got, night. It's an all-nighter. Oh, no. We got 11 minutes and 42 seconds. Oh, exactly. Shoot. Okay, so I'm going to ask some uh, some uh, relevant questions here. We got a ton of them. Not that none of them are irrelevant, but uh, this is in reference to the new Connecticut, and this one's from CRA James. This is uh, with Connecticut wrappers uh, being uh, generally hard to work with and delicate. So did you have any issues with some of the new stuff that you were producing? Any issues with the wrappers? And if you did, how did you overcome it? Uh, no, thankfully, no. There, there hasn't really been any issues, but uh, uh, typically, so Connecticut, Connecticut is a lot more difficult to work with than Ecuadorian Connecticut. That's now, so let me, yeah, let me, let me just focus on that part of it, just to be absolutely clear. Um, but with that said, the uh, shade of Connecticut that I'm using is not your typical. Ecuadorian Connecticut. So what you'll see is a lot of the Ecuadorian Connecticut in today's market has that really dark look. Like if you look at a, a Davidoff cigar or some of the other uh, Ecuadorians, they have that real dark look to them. Uh, the one I'm using is, is uh, as, as yellow as I possibly can get. So that's the shade that I'm looking at. It's a little bit of a thinner wrapper. However, when compared to Connecticut, Connecticut, even at the lighter shade thinness that I have for Ecuador, it's still not as thin and there really isn't an issue. Um, but again, now with that said, when comparing the Ecuadorian Connecticut that I'm using with uh, a Nicaraguan wrapper or a Habano Sun Grown or even the Coyote Negro, it's going to be 
much thinner. So, um, so you're not going to run into those same issues. No. <clears throat> okay. No, not at all. Um, I, no. <laughs> sometimes no. I think no, no is just no. just no is an acceptable. <laughs> it's just not an issue. And um, I, I'm going to ask one. This one's from Larry, fifty two hundred. Um, Larry David, uh, is that who it is? Yeah, he watches the show, right? Uh, I, 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 if he he must have a different. Man, we have fans all over the damn he's, globe. He's got a different. I think he's got a different name. Yeah, that's actually, a, and you know, it's funny that you brought that up, Logan, because I said in the post on Cigar Federation. So we've got LEC in the house, and if you're a cigar federate, if you're a cigar chat. OG member, you'll know what that you'll is. You'll know it. A little inch of the cut, baby. If you don't, we'll explain it. And so we'll ex although we won't go into the whole depth of why that term came up, you have to go back and watch the old episode with Victor. Um, but this one is a question from Larry. Uh, he says, "Do you think? Do you think the fear people have of smoking and the growth and the growing popularity of vaping will affect the sale of cigars in the near future?" And I ask this for two reasons. One, because you are in Vapeville. At your uh, at IPCPR last year, you were right on the edges of where all the vape people were. Yeah. And I want to say that I saw some pictures from you on Instagram or something that you are vaping now. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I don't think that uh, the cigar industry is in jeopardy of losing cigar smokers to vaping. Uh, uh, maybe there will be some curiosity from cigar smokers to try it and see what's going on, but... I really don't see a traditional cigar smoker moving on to vaping. That's just my personal opinion. No. Yeah, it's. Uh, I've I've never had an interest in it. Um, I vaped. You vaped. How how was that experience for you? He didn't inhale. No, man. I totally <laughs> inhaled. I ain't no Bill Clinton, man. I ain't monkeying around with it. Um, no, one of my coworkers, man. He he used to smoke cigarettes. I tried to get him on cigars and I failed miserably. And we were on a work trip. And he's like, yeah, man, you got to try this vape. And I was like, man, you know, I'll try anything once. And gave it a shot. And first of all, it was like watermelon, so it was gross flavored. Ooh. And he's like, so are you like a flavor guy or are you like a cloud chaser? I'm like, dude, I don't even know what you're talking about right now. <laughs> Dang, I don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> and he goes, yeah, cloud chaser is like someone who likes a lot of smoke. And I said, okay, well, I want a lot of smoke. So he tweaked the thing. And, dude, it was the most nasty, vile thing. Like I literally had to, like, scrub my mouth. And, like, I literally got, like, those little, you know, uh, nose saline stuff because that stuff would just leave a stank up in your nostrils. <laughs> I just didn't like it. It was just me, though. Yeah, but I'd be interested if you'd have, like, a tobacco-flavored one, like, that tastes like a, Nicarag a Nicaraguan pure or Dominican pure. I think that'd be kind of interesting. Yeah, I, I don't know. I've, I've never vaped. I've never been intrigued by it. Um the only thing I know about it is what I see at IPCPR, and they have some lovely young ladies peddling it to me as I walk by. Um, but uh, beyond that, that's that's the extent of my interest. I just I'm curious in what she's wearing, but that's about it. Um, I think we've got time for one more question. Um, this one's from Jason Medina, and I'm asking it because he referenced me. Um, he says, "Creamy, sweet, rich dessert. Tortuga Reserva, Connecticut, sounds like it's right up your alley, Rob. It does sound like it's right up my alley." Uh, Dude, says, well played, sir. He says, Victor, thanks for thanks for focusing on flavor. Do you think there there is or will be a trend of blending mild cigars that have a ton of flavor? He, he referenced yes. them as mild flavor bombs. Yeah, uh, I think that my Tortuga, Connecticut, has a ton of flavor. And what I what I'd like to do is, and this is not directed at the person that asked the question. But what I would do is I would I would challenge the people that are strictly full-bodied guys to smoke a Tortuga, Connecticut at the end of the day and see how much flavor you actually get out of it after you totally destroyed your palate all day long with full-bodied cigars. And I don't mean I don't mean to use the word destroy in a negative way. Just you know we know what that is to smoke yeah. four or five full-bodied cigars. Assault, yeah, assault yeah. is a good word. So smoke it. Enjoy the elegance, enjoy the complexity, and enjoy the flavor of that Connecticut because I can tell you it's not going to be mild and bland and weak. It's going to have a lot of flavor. It is balanced, and it will have complexity to it. Well, I'm looking forward to it. I mean, when I, I like 
and I've, I've used the term elegant to describe a few cigars, and I like that aspect of it. When you get a cigar that's not going to blow your face off, and it's got a ton of flavor to it, and when I'm done with it, I feel like I could still go about the rest of my day. I don't need to sit down. I don't need to eat anything. I, I like that. I like having a cigar that I, I know I can smoke it in the morning, I could smoke it in the afternoon, or I could smoke it at night. And the one cigar that comes to mind for me that's like that is the, uh, <clears throat> the Casada uh, 40th Anniversary uh, Corona Classico. That was, that was just a beautiful, beautiful cigar. So if it's anything that's in that type of range, and I think that also had a, a, an Ecuadorian Connecticut wrapper on, if memory it serves. Uh, that is, that's right in my freaking wheelhouse, man, so I'm excited. I know I've got a couple of samples on their way, so you guys can see a review from me in the coming weeks uh, for sure. Logan, do we have time for one more question or no? Yeah, and I, we have time for one question, and I want to make a point really quick, is that there's a different, you can have, I think people have this misconception, and maybe I've spread this misconception, so I want to write it right now, is that just because you have a strong cigar, nicotine-wise, doesn't mean that it's necessarily going to have a ton of flavor. And just because you have a mild cigar doesn't necessarily mean it's not going to have flavor. Flavor all comes from the essential oils, how it's fermented, and et cetera, right, and how it's aged. So it's kind of like, think about, you know, I'm trying to give a good example here. It's like, I don't know, I don't know if I have a good example, but you can, just because you have a low nicotine cigar, which Connecticut's typically are, doesn't mean they don't have flavor. So I just want to set that misconception you're, straight. You're, you're, you're setting everybody straight. Coming from the guy who likes to smoke quadruple set straight. for breakfast. Hey, you know what I smoked for breakfast today at 8 in the morning? A freaking tantrum. And it was awesome. I, I, I do like that cigar. That's a good little smoke. Uh, one last question. Another one from Bob Dog. His, Bob's questions, Bob was on fire today. His questions were very well liked and highly voted. Bob's probably uh, going to win something. I, I, you know, I, I, he's actually the first person on the list. I've been keeping track. I know you haven't. Um, he says, any future projects coming up with Armand Asante? Yes, uh, Armand will uh, uh, be at the trade show this year, and uh, you know, there's uh, there's some stuff going on. You know, Armand is uh, he does a lot of work overseas, and he's still very active uh, in the movie business. And I would keep a lookout for uh, for some Armand Asante stuff uh, in some of the recent movies that he's making. Really? Whoa. Yeah. Throw, he's gonna have some some cigars in the in the in the upcoming movies, huh? Yeah, that's really cool. So I will say we we did get a chance to chat with Armand a little bit at IPCPR, and he, I don't really get starstruck, but it's 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 so funny when you see somebody who's in movies and playing these characters, and he tends to play at least in the movies that I recognize him from. He's he tends to play a bad guy sometimes, you know. And so going to meet and meeting him and seeing him there, I was a little bit intimidated. But he was a sweetheart, really nice guy, and came up, introduced himself, and was just and wanted to chat a little bit. I mean, obviously, he's pulled in a lot of different directions there, and, and we know our place and everything like that. But he was very, very gracious, so I, I did want to give him uh, him some props on that because it was really. And I haven't said props in like 15 years. I don't know why that came out of my mouth, but uh, I don't even he, know who he was. It was it was very cool that that uh, Logan just don't even speak sometimes. It's not for my generation, man. He's making movies now. You're just watching bad. What movies he in? He's been in a lot of films. I, and now that you're name one up, that I've know. Victor, you can. I'm sure Victor can give us a list of some of the movies that he's in. We're up against it though, so we I'm need. I'm googling end, this crap. We've got to end our AFRN segment. How do you spell his name? <laughs> it's A S A N T E, right? Asante. Armand. A, uh, I'll just spell the first three letters. A S S. Oh, there's two S's. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'll figure it out. Okay. <laughs> that was for Logan. <laughs> uh, yeah. I know, man. I'm a stupid loser. I don't know how to spell Armo de Santi. Well, I oh. spelled it wrong, too, so you're fine. Okay, so we got to wrap up our AFRN segment. Victor, really do appreciate oh, excuse me, you hanging out with us and uh, working through our technical difficulties at the beginning of the show. Um, and, and for your candor and the way that you answer questions, I really do appreciate it. Well, thanks for having me on always. I'm a big fan, as you guys know, and uh, just keep rocking out and doing all the good work you're doing. Thank you so much. We do appreciate it. And uh, Victor, is he is a fan of the show, and he really does. Uh, he tunes in and watches shows when he's not the guest, so that's, yeah, that's, right. that's, that's pretty awesome. I like that. So, guys, really do appreciate your support. We will be back next week with uh, Miami. Jason, Jason Wood of Miami Cigar Company, so that'll be fun. Uh, next Thursday we'll be back at the same time, same place. You can find us at CigarFederation.com. 
Uh, Victor, quick, in like 30 seconds, let everybody know where they can find you online. Uh, right here uh, on the video? What do you mean? Facebook, Instagram? <laughs> well, like where can they find you on the interwebs? I don't know. Just Google VictorVitale.com or uh, TortugaCigars.com. I suck at SocialMedia.com and you'll find me. <laughs> Well, we, we didn't even get into your website. Logan wanted to trash you on your website, but I talked Dude. about it. So, bro, just anyway. email me, homie. I'll help you out. we got to wrap yeah, up. I need some help, man. Come on. Know, dude. <laughs> really do appreciate you guys. Everybody You're holding out. out. You're holding out. Everybody out there listening on the Armed Forces Radio Network, uh, seriously, thank, we thank you every week, but thank you so much for what you guys are doing. Uh, you're doing things that I'm not built to do, so um, nope. thank you. really do appreciate it. And uh, everybody have a great weekend. Stay safe, and we'll be back with you next week. Later. And we're fucking back. And All dude, right. yeah. Armada Santi's been in a fuck pile of movies, man. So, that uh, I've Victor, never Victor, heard of. As you can tell, we're we're still we're still broadcasting. The AFRN segment is over, so you can say shit, bitch, cockballs, whatever you want. All right, I you know I've been holding it in all that time. You have, I, I can mean, tell. I mean, let the whole bag of them out. Yeah, I, yeah, you definitely <laughs> look like a guy who suffers from a case of potty mouth. Dude, I, I, I don't know any of these fucking movies. He's he's done some pretty sweet movies. I'll look and I'll. No, I'll there was one right here that he did that was really good that I have seen. Hold on, I'll, Judge I'll, Dredd. You saw Judge Dredd? Jesus. That, you know that that movie it got no, a lot it. of flack when it came out and when it was released. I never read the comic books, but. If I've seen American movie, Gangster. That's good. American Gangster, Hoffa, so many movies. Paradise oh, Alley. Cool. Do you know how many he's doing this year? Like, he's literally doing, like, 15 movies this year. That's awesome. Yeah. No, seriously. I mean, according to the Internet Movie Database. Uh, IMDB? Yeah, that's whatever. What, oh, that's what that stands for. I never knew that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, fucking Durka, man. <laughs> That's right there, Internet Movie Database. You well, I always, I, I just, I look at it on my phone. I have the app because I like movie trailers. I always like to watch the trailers. And my wife will tell you this: when I see a trailer for a good movie, I'll always tell her, "Look, this movie is going to be nominated for something." And I'm always right. I'm always right. And I, and and Victor, maybe you can help us out with this because you've got that connection with Hollywood. If we could have uh, Jessica Chastain show up, maybe at your booth this year, that would be pretty awesome. Who is that? Yeah, oh, come on. You guys don't know who Jessica Chastain is? No, I'm about don't. to Google this shit. She was in uh, Zero Dark Thirty. She's a redhead. Well, that's a good start. Redhead, yeah. Well, did you, did, well she's, yeah, she's not tough to look at. She's actually in a movie now, uh, or it came out last year. It was called... Uh, oh, most, hell yeah. A Most Violent Year. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, she's she's not tough on the eyes. I've already told my wife that if she comes around, I might have to change my last name to Chastain. It's all right. I'll do it. <laughs> but uh, anyway, you know, but I digress. Yeah, if you don't know who she is, Google her. She's, she's not tough on the eyes, and she's, yeah, a really man, good, yeah. she's a really good actress, too. Is it actress or actor? Because I know for a while it was no, just actor no uh, matter who it was. But now it's, is it actress again? I think they've changed it all to actor. Yeah, so that's what it was for a while, and I don't know if it came back. I don't know. I, I, I mean, hard... that, is that like a sexist thing? Like where they don't women? I don't think, know. They can't make up their fucking minds. You know, it's a this is a, this, it's an actor. What? <laughs> well, it's like it's like come on. It's like Stewart or Stewart Stewardess. Well, I think that's I think that's different. But like with receptionist, the receptionist isn't really the right term anymore. It's like executive assistant or like. Well, office. they can't make up their minds. You know, this is kind of weird. You know, I, I hope we're not offending anyone, but you know, you, you go to a restaurant these days, and it's not waiter or waitress; it's server or you know what. So it's different every time. Yeah, the titles know? always change. I just. What I, is it? I, I don't know. Nobody's ever. Bartender, had. mixologist. You know what? Well, mixologist. Know. If I were a bartender, I'd want to be called a mixologist. That's a cool title. That is but, a cool title. I the mean, only I, reason people call it executive assistant is because it's trying to make it sound fancier than it really is. You know, it's it's sometimes it's not a fancy gig, but sometimes they pay an ass ton of money for yeah. a good executive assistant. But I mean, we're getting so far off topic. Uh, but we this is the of, After Dark segment, so we don't give a we, fuck. We had a lot of questions that we didn't get to. <laughs> uh, Logan, how many winners are we picking tonight? I know we're going to pick two or three podcast winners because our podcast numbers as you guys don't know, because you wouldn't know, but our podcast numbers have skyrocketed over the last few months. A fuck it, apparently. The, the number of people who who watch the show live, and you add that into the people who watch the show on YouTube, is 
a drop in the bucket compared to the people who listen on podcasts, and we don't award them enough. So we need to pick, I'm thinking, three podcast winners. So if you're listening to the show, podcast, if you're listening to the show on podcast, and I know when the podcast is is released, so don't email me tomorrow and try to bullshit me. Email Rob at CigarFederation.com. Here's the question. Oh, oh. there's a question. Oh, even better. Actually, email Logan. Go ahead. Ah, damn it. Um, Okay, email Logan at Cigar Federation and tell me what is Victor Vitale going to put in my bed tonight? (laughs) Wow, that is a... uh, Based on... Obviously, this is not a sexual thing. This is about what dead animal's head is he going to put into my bed tonight? That's too easy. Okay, screw think, it, Rob. I think, no, you I think the something. question the question should be what is the the uh, size and ring gauge of the cigar that Victor was only having rolled for him and ended up the customers and uh, retailers wanted to carry it in the store, so now he carries it. What size is that? That's a better question, right? Absolutely. Dude, at this point, I don't give a fuck. Just let's pick something. All right, so I'm gonna pick. I, I've got the winners here, and I'm gonna pick these. Are you okay with that, Logan? <laughs> As long as you can cor- you can assemble all of it and get it to me ASAP because I'm going to be packaging this shit up tonight. All right, so okay, so the next we've got one, two, three, four, five, six winners here. We're going to pick three podcast winners. So There's pick a total of eight winners. So one person gets fucked. That's a total of nine. It's a total of okay, nine. Okay, we'll 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 nine. I don't care. Whatever. So if I read your name off here in a second, you email Logan at Cigar Federation. Mm. In the title, you put. Rob is so much better than you. And, and if you do that, you don't win. And just then so you know. in, in the body of the email, put your name. Say, Rob read my name. I'm a winner. Uh, put your name and your uh, mailing address so Logan can get those prizes out. Winners are, in no particular order except in the order that I wrote them down, Bob Dog is an obvious winner because we asked like nine of his questions. Harley Holmes is a winner. He wins too much. No, he doesn't. He doesn't. And he asked some good questions that we answered without really getting to him. Uh, Jason Medina is a winner because he asked a question that was based on me. Um, Miguel Roca, because I don't feel like we ever pick him. We didn't get to his question. He's a Michael, good one. Michael Allison is also a winner because he, he asked some good questions that we didn't get to. And Larry5200, um, because he asked a question that was a really good question. I don't know who he is. He's got to have a different screen name on Cigar Federation. He's got to. So those are the six winners. Bob Dog, Harley Holmes, Jason Medina, Mike, Mikel, Miguel Miguel Roca, Michael Allison, and Larry5200. Those are our winners. So, again, thank you for the great questions. And, Logan, you got anything else you want to do before we uh, wrap it up? Other than, man, Victor, I just love you, man. Like, you're a freaking enigma. Because you're like, let me show you this. He looks like old um, Don Draper on the back of his box, right? But if you look at him in person, if you did a (laughs) side-by-side, not so much. No, and you that's know what, what I love about Victor. You know what? What's we've seen very different sides of Victor. The we have. I've Victor, seen him in hunting boots before, which is a fucking shocker. <laughs> that's weird because I haven't seen that. But the first time that we met Victor was when we had um, Ernesto Padilla on the show, right? It was, man. That was the first time that we met you, and you had your little tie and your your coat and everything, and you were you were looking all fly at the uh, at a, 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 a rooftop party in Miami. And then we had him on the show a couple weeks later, and he was decked out, suit and tie and everything, looking all sharp. And then we did the uh, Coyote Negro, which I'm smoking tonight, the Coyote Negro release, which was I think, the first people in the world to smoke that cigar were Cigar Federation That's right. uh, Cigar of the Month Club members. And then I remember when we did that show, you showed up looking like you just woke up. And then today <laughs> you, you roll in with, like, massive beard. Like, we've seen, we've seen Fifty Shades of Victor. We really uh, have. Here I am. <laughs> <laughs> no, in shows with you, Victor. We, we uh, I think we, we might take you for granted a little bit because you're, you're, uh, you've made yourself very accessible to us, and we really do appreciate that. Um, I mean, I've had, uh, when was it? It was like about a month ago on a Tuesday. Victor just called me up, and we chatted for about an hour just about the industry in general, talked about family, talked about life, and uh, I, I do consider Victor a friend. Um, so maybe when I review your cigar, I have to note that in there when I give the score. Say, due to my relationship with Victor, you know, I'm going to give this cigar a 98. But 
No, I, 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 I really do enjoy having you on the show. It's a lot of fun. You give us really good answers uh, to the questions that people ask. And I, I feel like you draw out some more interesting questions from our audience, too. Because we talked about some things that we don't normally talk about. So Thank much you. much, uh, much credit to you, and I really do enjoy having you on the show. I, I love being on. You know, If you want to have a video hug or something, I think we should all get in on that one. Yeah. Oh. I, I Come on, Logan. Lean in. Oh, yeah. I'm totally hug it. Oh, make sure you hug it out. Hug it out. Hug it out. So, <laughs> anything else you want to talk about before we wrap it up? I mean, we got, we got, there's a bunch of questions left, but we don't have time to get to all those. Anything? Oh, man. Anything? No, man. I'm just, I'm just glad to see my friend Victor, man. Just hanging out. I'll let everybody know that I have been, I started out, and you'll notice that I've, I've been a little bit more chatty towards the end because I'm. He's almost, been fucking drinking. I'm almost done. Up? My, my Lagunitas uh, yeah, Cappuccino that? Stout. That looks good. What is it? Is it is quite. Lagunitas Cappuccino Stout. Oh, wow, that quite, looks really good. It is quite tasty. 8.9% uh, alcohol by volume. Oh, yeah, you're wasted. 29.5 uh, uh, <laughs> IBUs, so it's not very bitter. Uh, the original gravity is 1.067. If you tune into uh, our pairing show, you'll know what some of that means. I, I always forget what original gravity means, but IBUs is bitterness rate. But this is a pretty tasty, cap, or a pretty tasty stout. If you like stouts, it's got a nice flavor to it. And... Quite affordable. I think this was only like four ninety nine for twenty two ounces. So I've had fun. Anything else? Any parting words of wisdom, Victor? Uh, on you, you got to say something profound now. I uh, where where are you right now? I know you're traveling. Where are you at? I'm actually uh, I'm in New Hampshire right now. So I'm I'm back like in my in my home away from home state. The weather's nice. It got up to a a, a really Balmy, thirty-seven degrees today. Ooh. It was seventy-five today. It was beautiful. Yeah, it was like seventy-eight <laughs> here, man. It's gonna be eighty-two tomorrow. Eighty-two in California. Wow. It's not March. It's it's scary, actually. If you could wow. take some of that rain and snow that you guys are getting over there and send it to the other side of the country, that'd be great. I, I'm just ready for baseball, man. I just I can't wait for baseball to start. I think we got like three weeks, and uh, let's just let's just get it going. Are you a Red Sox fan? Of course, yeah. So how do you feel about the Sox? You guys signed everybody and their mother this year. I think they got a better shot than the Phillies. Oh, girl, the Phillies are going to have a rough year. Awesome. But you guys got you got Pablo Sandoval. He's he's my guy. He's got three rings from San Francisco, and then he took the money and left. I don't blame him at all. I'd take the money too. Yeah, I think uh, I think it's going to be a fun season. It should be. That I, you know, we could, I could talk about baseball for the next hour, so I won't bore you. Yeah, let's not do that. So, okay, since you're in the Northeast, you're in that New England area, where are the Hamptons? The yeah, Hamptons that's in New York, are, man. That, that's on Long Island. The Hamptons are on Long Island. See, I had no idea. Long, Long Island. You Long, Long Island. Long Island. I see. That's, is try, that the, try it again. Try it again. Long Island. Long Island. Yeah, that's it. Is that, is that the connect? Cor, connect. <laughs> <laughs> connect or... Is that the connect pronunciation? Yeah, that's it. That's the way. Long Island. So I've been putting the emphasis on the wrong syllables. Well, you're using too perfect English. Okay, I see. You gotta, you know, you gotta speak American English. Got it. Okay, we gotta, we gotta loosen it up. Don't Long Island. They're gonna be like, hey, come on, go. So the Hamptons are on Long Island, and, and Long Island, sorry, and it's that's just where like rich people go and like sit on the beach. That's where they summer, man. Yeah, I don't know anything about uh, it. That's uh, the Hamptons are beautiful. You know, it's a beautiful place. Uh, it used to be, uh, you know, it's a uh, Native American trails. Uh, you know, just it's just a it's a paradise so close to uh, to New York City. So yeah. it's it's a nice place to summer, from what I understand. Beautiful place to summer. It is. Well, Logan, we have to do that. Let's 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 plan a summer trip. Well, maybe when the Cigar Federation bank account goes from <laughs> negative to <laughs> positive, we could discuss it, Rob. All right. Speaking of that, Victor, when we get offline, we're going to talk to you about some advertising opportunities on Cigar Federation. I know you got to sponsor our <laughs> our summer rig at uh, the Hamptons. All there right, guys. So we've uh, I think we've bullshitted long enough at the end of the show. So we'll we'll let Victor go. We've had him longer than we anticipated. So, uh, Victor, as always, really do appreciate you spending the time, uh, being very generous with the giveaways as well. Um, we'll get some uh, reviews posted as soon as I will be reviewing the Connecticut, not Logan, because. Although I am curious to see what Logan thinks about it, because that's what you want. You want somebody who smokes those big cigars to smoke it, and yeah. and and tell us what the experience is. So maybe maybe we'll double up. We'll do like a little double up review. Yeah, I, I quit reviewing cigars. 
Yeah, Logan doesn't smoke cigars anymore. He just smokes a pipe. I moved to the pipe, man. I, I smoke my bowls, man. Smoke you my bowls. You're, the pipe. you're smoking the pipe? Yeah, dude. You haven't seen my... Hold on a second. Let me turn this around. Let's I'm about to blow pipe, your man. fucking mind here. He just raging, he on, he's just raging on bowls and ripping bowls. And, oh, 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 look at that. Wow, what do you got there? You got yourself some uh, Virginia, Perique, I got Radakia. all types of good shit. Look at Look this, at that. Huh? right in the, in the ball jar. Yeah, dude. I got all types of good shit, man. We need to have you on the pipe show because I heard you used Over to there. You smoke a pipe or you sold pipes or Yeah, something. sure. I, I, I still smoke my pipe once in a while, and uh, I, I was in the pipe business for a long time. I sold pipes door-to-door uh, -door retail, which is like uh, literally uh, the hardest job in the world. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's really <laughs> difficult. Um, but yeah, I, I know just as much about pipes as, uh, you know, a five-year-old, so I can, you know, I can help you out there. Well, you, you know more us, than me. You've got us beat by a good three or four years. <laughs> That's good. All right, guys, really do appreciate you checking out the show. Uh, you can find us on CigarFederation.com. Remember, if you're a podcast listener, email Logan, and he will pick some winners randomly. They will be... Uh, you'll you'll reply to their emails direct and let them know because that's what I've always done, Logan. If they've yeah, won. I don't do that. Um, well, or maybe something will just show up and one day it just shows up. If it does, it does. Hey, happy day. It's like Christmas. Um, Victor, again, really appreciate it, guys. Uh, you can find us at cigarfederation.com. We will be back next week with uh, Jason Wood of Miami Cigar Company. So that'll be fun. We haven't had Jason on the show before, so that'll be fun to uh, talk about everything that's going on with them. They're doing a lot of cool stuff. So really do appreciate it. Everybody have a good weekend. Smoke some good stuff. Download the Cigar Federation app yes. on your Android or your iPhone. And uh, go ahead and start posting and just get weird with it. But uh, don't post anything inappropriate. And that's it. We'll catch you guys next week. Everybody have a good weekend. Stay safe. Later.